Are you ready? What? What? Was that new intro? I don't know, it looks like it. So yeah, now finally the intro represents the new Dark Dance space. But I kept the same concept and the music because I think by now it's really iconic and I didn't want to change that. And I also read that a lot of you thought the same. It is basic, but I think it serves its purpose, right? Now what we have ready for today's video. We will do a couple of rehouses, all brahipelmas. If that female didn't escape, I still didn't find her. If she didn't escape, she would be featured in today's video, but unfortunately she is not. It looks like I will need to initiate a deep and thorough search and hopefully that will that will result some, some positive news. But let's concentrate at what we have here. First, we will have five, or oh five, three basic setups for terrestrial tarantulas, like brahipelmas, gramostolas, and all that beginner tarantulas. I will use these, these plastic bins that are awesome because they are stackable. As you know, a large amount of animals in this collection is kept in these type of boxes, bigger and smaller. They are really practical. I just drill the holes on both sides, front, back. That is better solution than drilling the top lid because I want to have them stacked. And if you have ventilation the top lids, once you stack the enclosures, you cut off that ventilation. So that's why ventilation holes on the side. Three of these and we have one, one big female you know the female, big female Brahipelma Behmei or Bomai, however you want to pronounce it. She's really nice and she really likes to kick hairs. So she will finally get upgraded setup. I will use this classic terrestrial enclosure. 30 by 25 by 25. Ventilation on front, ventilation on top lid. So we have nice cross ventilation. Although Brahipelmas are, don't kick hairs. Brahipelmas are kept really dry. You see, you didn't see, but she's already kicking hairs. Brahipelmas are kept... Stop! They are kept mostly dry, so you don't need a lot of ventilation, but it is good to have. I will also record this video as if you have no idea how to make a basic setup for tarantula. So this will be sort of a tutorial on how to make a basic setup that also in the same time looks nice. It's not like amazing nice, but it is all right and not just plastic tub like that is the most basic setup. This will be the more advanced but basic setup. Yeah, I'm so good at explaining, right? <laughs> Actually, no. First, first we need to move smaller tarantulas into these. You know, when you're doing something, you always need to keep the best things for last. <laughs> that is the rule. Which one is first? Oh, our atom. So she was featured in my recent feeding video. If you haven't seen it, make sure to check it out. Rahipelma auratum. Young female, <laughs> don't be mad at me. So all we need, the most basic setup you can have for terrestrial tarantula, like any Brachypelma, any Gramostola, any Afonopelma, Acanthoscurias, Nandus, Asiodora Parahibana and similar. All of those genus, all of them are kept basically the same and in basically the same enclosures, same style. So just a bit of substrate. And the best height you can have, at least in my opinion, the most easiest solution and the best looking is, of course, the cork bark. The thing about cork bark, it's super light, really, really light, and it also, it never molds. So you can see why it is perfect. You can have better option than that. And also, in the same time, it is round, so you can easily cut it and make a half pipe for your hide. Or you can just have the completely round cork bark, which is also awesome for our border enclosures or boreal tarantulas. So just burrowed like that. It's a water dish. Also, I, I would like to explain the situation because a lot of people are asking me why I don't have water dish inside of majority of my enclosures. The reason is tarantulas don't really need water dish. They get majority of moisture from, the, from their prey and also if you moist the substrate, they can suck it out from there. So what I do for my tarantulas, I just moist one corner and let it dry out. Then next time I moist the other corner, the another corner. So usually I just rotate the corners. You don't want the same corner to be moist all the time because then nasty stuff can develop in that constant moisture. And this is all you need for keeping tarantula. And you can even make it cheaper. For water dish, you can just use some, some bottle cap. Instead of cork bark, you can use like plastic pot for plants. You just cut it off and then use that as a hide. Or any plastic pipe, it works the same. It just, cork bark is much more prettier. 
And then I didn't mention what's the substrate. This is 50% cocoa fiber and 50% potting soil. But you can exclusively use cocoa fiber. That's also fine. You see in this enclosure, for example, this is plain cocoa fiber. So little girl, do you want to check out your new enclosure? Go, go, go. She doesn't want to move. Come on, you will like it. Trust me. It's much better than this cup. <laughs> no? I really need to push you, huh? She's holding so well. Come on. Don't be shy. You're stubborn. There we go. Come on, go and check it out. She's not really in the mood for checking out stuff. Or oh, just stay like there. I don't mind. We will move to the next one. Next one is Brachypelma albiceps. She was also featured in that feeding video. She is a bit bigger. You see? A bit bigger. So for her also same thing. Substrate. Cork bar for hide. And you don't really need to make a hide immediately. Tarantula can dig and just make like, you see, like starting point and she will figure out that she can dig under it. Usually they figure that stuff out, but if your tarantula is not digging, that's also all right. It's, it really depends. Some of my tarantulas never dig, they just hang out outside. That's even better because you can see it all the time. Unlike when it digs and just disappears for months. Let's see if this female is more in the mood for exploring. <laughs> oh, kicking hairs. Can just lift you up, you know? Slowly but surely, yeah, better. There we go. How do you like it? It's much more spacious, even though you don't really care about that. Do you want to explore your new home maybe? Or maybe stand there? Yeah, whatever. Whatever rings your bell. Two down, two to go. Oh, before I forget, because I already forgot. As I said in multiple videos, the dark den is located in one building that is like made for starting up new businesses. And I'm here as part of that program. And now for, I don't know how to call it, organization, that organization that is leading this place called Koprivnički Poduzetnik. They asked me if they can interview me and make a video about me. Yeah, so they recorded interview with me like a few months ago, but only now they finished it up and it is posted on their YouTube channel. So I will link it. So you can check it out. It came out to be all right. Maybe you will find it interesting because it is about me <laughs> and the dark den in general. It is on creation, but it also got subtitles so you can turn it on and just understand everything that it is going on. So if you want to check that out, it will be linked in the description. Back to the rehouses. Uh, substrate, substrate, more substrate. This Brahipelma is called Baumgarte Baum Baumgarteni. Baumgarteni. It is the biggest out of the three. The three small females. This one is the biggest, of course. Hello, do you want to go out on my hand? I haven't handled one tarantula in a long time, so maybe you can be, be the one. Do I need to push you a bit? Handling video! It is really similar like, like Emilia. Hmm. Off you go. Do you want to go? No? No, you want to stay on my hand? <laughs> so cute! And so calm, unlike this Brahipelma, the hair kicker. Okay, now we need to carry on with the video. So I will kindly ask you if you can just... No? There we go. <laughs> One final look at her before we carry on with the with the video bye bye thank you for being nice sweet now the big boy in case you don't know all of these glass enclosures that i have they are all made by me so you cannot get them at the moment maybe in the future i will make and sell them i don't know but for now ooh, i really need more substance but for now they are not available hopefully this will be enough yeah it should be Okay, so for the more fancier enclosure, the basic concept is still the same. The only difference is you have a fancy glass enclosure, you need more substrate and you need bigger hide and bigger water dish. And that's basically it. If I remember correctly, yeah, I want to put it like that. But I will still fill it up and make the range do the, the hard work of digging it up. 
Oh, and I also didn't point out the background. You don't need to have it, but if you have the background, your enclosure will look nicer, as you can see. This background is made out of styrofoam. I just cut the appropriate size of styrofoam sheet, carve it a bit, apply aquarium safe silicone on it, and just cover it with dry, dry substrate, and then that substrate adheres to the silicone, and you have this as the end result. I show how to made it in a couple of my videos, so I will just link you the one if you want to see how it's done. It's really easy. And also one tip when you are making enclosure. To achieve a better impression of depth to your enclosure, you want to make it like a hill. You see, on front you have less substrate and on back you have more substrate. And that makes enclosure feel more appealing to eye. At least I think. I'll just use everything. Now after you compact everything, one final touch. You know what it is. A bit of leaf litter. Also, you can add some twigs and fine details to it. It is all up to you to have fun with it. This is just the most basic, most basic stuff. Fill up the water dish. And let's add the tarantula. I will be haired so badly. I already know that. Maybe we can do it like... Push it here. Put it like this. Hairs. Damn, and it even makes sounds. Oh, so many hairs. <laughs> Come on, please don't hear me so much. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. There. <laughs> okay, stop, stop with the hairs. Since I got her, she has been like that. Just kicking hairs like crazy. Ooh, but she looks so nice on this. Look. She looks so good in this enclosure, I like it so much. I like it a lot. Don't go out, please. Ooh, I need to take a picture. So pretty. Hey, 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 no going out, please. Back. Oh, come on. Let's close this off because I don't want to be heard. She looks so good in that. Now let me just show you the difference. Here we have two same enclosures, but set up differently, obviously. This one houses Gramostola pulchripes female, now known as Easy, if you remember, as named by one subscriber. And this enclosure, it's basically the same setup, but this one doesn't have the background and uh, the substrate is just cocoa fiber and basically flat. So you see how, how this one looks so much better than this one. Would you agree with me? And also the leaf litter, it makes so much difference. I think we can finish the video here. Just one final comparison. So this or this? Which enclosure would you pick? I think it's obvious, right? So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel even more, there's a Patreon page. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll, I upload every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So see you again soon. Bye-bye.